A few days ago, Framer just released an update that is awesome. Basically, you're able to now create 3D transforms and create really cool interactions and animations with them. So I'm gonna show you how to create this cool little card effect, and I'm gonna show you how to do it from scratch. So this means building this entire layout from scratch, making them components, also utilizing variables so that we can make unique cards uh, using the same component, and then also how to create an interaction that takes and utilizes this new 3D transform ability. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Okay, so to get started here in Figma is just a real quick design of the card that I wanted to create. And I will link this project for you guys to be able to clone it within Figma if you wish. Um, now we could take this and right click and just take the plugins and just go to Figma to HTML with Framer. Um, I'm going to show you how to just recreate this from scratch within Framer itself. Um, and then we'll just reference um, this document to get the colors and the icons and stuff like that. So here I have a new document in Framer. And the first thing we want to do is just match up the, the background color, essentially. Uh, so we're going to grab this real quick. And that's a color code of 131313. And we'll just click over here under Styles, paste that in, and we're ready to rock. Now, of course, I'm also going to add a layout right here to the actual main starting point frame. And these um, settings by default will work just fine. But you do want to click layout now next we're going to hit the f for the frame tool on your keyboard and just left click and drag out um that's actually pretty big probably a size you know right around maybe like there i think that's pretty good now because we made that a layout it's going to bind that to the middle and now what i want to do is we want to match up the colors here now we could take this and center this by the way that's fine and Let's go back to our document here and let's grab these colors. So this lighter color is 0093FD. And I'm going to go back. We're just going to put that in here in the fill section. We're going to give it a little bit of a border radius. So I'm just going to select in here and use my keyboard up arrow key to add just some rounded corners right there. And next up, I'm going to hit the frame tool again, just hit F. And within it, just draw out a size, roughly that shape. And then we'll go back to Figma real quickly to grab that color code. So it's a darker color. That's 0059DE. And I'm going to paste that in for the colors right here. And we'll give this some um, rounded corners as well. All right. So your design should look pretty similar to this so far. Um, looks pretty good to me. Now, with this element selected, if we click over layers, we'll see its frame. Let's just call, uh, double click that and call that card. And then we have uh, our header up top. All right. And with card selected, we don't have a layout added, but we want to add a layout because we're going to have this element, this darker blue element, and then another text based element underneath it. So we're just going to create kind of like a, uh, a what do you call a flex box sort of layout in this in the context of the stack here so now we can see the the white space is screwed up and that's because this doesn't really have uh, any padding anyways uh, if i click right here so if we increase this padding we'll get that leveled up however we also want to make sure that this inner element this header element is a hundred percent of the parent container now we can leave the height at a fixed height that's fine and now if we zoom or drag this out, you'll see it is responsive. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, we're gonna go back and I'm gonna grab this element over here in our Figma document. So I'm just gonna take this element right here, this vector element, right click, F, uh, Figma to HTML with Framer, this is what you want. If you don't have this plugin yet, just install it here within Figma and make sure i do that actually that commits there there will say copied one layer so you can paste in framer now we'll go back we're we'll selected side of the header and just paste that in now we're going to take the header element itself and click layout and voila there we go awesome now if we were to move this like outside of it for instance if you notice that um overflow is hidden this means that uh, when we take this element 
and I, if we wanted to like hide it outside of the sound, maybe like animate it in, you could change this to position absolute and notice how it hides. That's just for an interaction thing if you wanted. We're gonna do that in a bit, with, but with a different element, like a tag here. Um, I just wanted to show you that real quick. We can leave that at relative here. All right, and there is an element as well that I did not design for uh, in this Figma document, but I wanna have a tag like right here that pops up on hover. So it'll come out from nowhere, and this is gonna be overflow hidden as it is currently. So we're just gonna design that straight into Framer itself. All right, so to do that, I'm just going to take the frame tool, hit F, and we're just gonna click right, right around here. And notice it didn't stay there because it's treating it like an actual element in the DOM. Uh, we want it to break outside of the box model, so to speak, and change this to absolute. All right, so now we can kind of fine tune the position of this and notice that it's pinned to the bottom left, bottom and left right there. So. Inside of here, I wanna have actual text, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a layout to it, which doesn't change, it doesn't change anything at this point because there's no elements inside of it. So, but we're setting it up for the future because we're gonna have a piece of text inside of it. And then we're also gonna take our radius and we're gonna bump that way up into a pill uh, shape essentially. So now we could take our type tool, hit T, left click inside of it, and I'm gonna type in framer.com. All right, and we're gonna go down to the type section. We're gonna make this really small type, like size 12, and we'll make it bold. There we go. And I think we're gonna make it white as well. All righty, and now what we wanna do is take the stack, that's the parent container, which we'll double click and then change that name to something like tag. And we wanna make sure that I, we have padding around here that's being applied. So I'm gonna add the padding on the left here, right around 16, and then we'll do the same thing and paste it on the right value as well. Uh, actually, let's see if we, okay, well, let's see there. Oh, the reason this is messed up is because we don't have fit content. So there we go. So now I have like way too much white space on the left and right. Okay, so 10 will work on the right and left here pretty well kind of like that. Okay, so that's cool. Um, and you know, again, if we left click this, it's, it's gonna respond how we want it to because we pinned it to the um, left and bottom. Okay, uh, next up, we're just gonna have another frame underneath here. And we'll just reorder these. There we go. So this frame at the bottom, we don't want a fill, uh, but we do wanna make sure it's 100%. And we'll do fit content here, which there's no content inside of it, so we can't yet. And then I'm gonna take a type tool and just uh, left click inside of this frame. Now this frame right here, we wanna give it a layout and we'll just do start and we'll center it as well because we want this text to be centered. Now real quickly, I'm just gonna grab this text and we're gonna go back. We're gonna paste this in all right, and then we're gonna make sure that this element is not with uh, auto fit. It's gonna be 100% relative. Okay, so we're starting to make some progress. Let's go ahead and center that, and we'll make this regular. And let's go ahead and increase the font size here. We'll just go to like say 14, line height, right around there. Okay, and then this element, this stack, notice says uh, it is fixed, so we're gonna do fit content. All right, and then this, the height of this element, the overall card, uh, can now be fit content as well. All right, and I might actually want to take this stack and instead of making 100%, we might do 90%, just to give a little bit of white space, or perhaps 95% on the left and right. Okay. So that's not looking too bad. I am yeah, fairly happy with that. So let's just say this is our card. And now what we wanna do in order to make this structured properly, because we wanna have two different cards, we should turn this into a component. So we're gonna right click and create component. Make sure it says card. Alrighty. And 
Under our car component, now we have to create some uh, properties or variables essentially so that we can be able to modify the second instance of this card, which means being able to change the colors and the icon and stuff like that. Um, and also doing a um, hover-based interaction on this. So let's do the hover-based interaction first. So if we select variant one, we click down here to hover and pressed, we'll do a hover variation. And for this hover variation, we'll take this top card and notice if we come up here, the bottom value is going to change if I hold shift and just left click and drag down. So it's negative, it's a negative 27 or so for me. Now that will change it on this instance as well. So we wanna bring that tag back and position it where it was before. So if we click uh, this and we put like 27 here, now we can just drag it into a better location. I think that looks good. There we go. So now we have our hover state, and if we go to hit play, we'll see it shows up. Nice. Okay, awesome. I do wanna add a little bit more white space, I think, between the card uh, itself and the text. So I think right there is better. There we go. And maybe a little bit more white space um, at the bottom. Yeah, I don't wanna to get too uh, specific right now, but we're good so far. So now what I wanna uh, do is basically take uh, the overall variant one itself and notice it says fill. We wanna click create variable, a color variable, and we'll just call this card BG. And then we'll also grab this color. We'll call this another color variable and that's gonna be called header BG. Outside of that, we're gonna take this element and we are going to modify this. Let's see here, it says frame or symbol. Um, we need to be able to, to, to create a actual, so if we double click into this, you're gonna see real quickly, there we go. Now we have access to the group itself and it says join and path and all that good stuff. Um, we're not able to, to do what we want here in this context. So what I'll do is uh, we're gonna select this element and I'm just going to hit delete and then we're gonna hit a, uh, the F tool frame in the middle here. Now, once we do that, then what we can do is get rid of the fill, but add a, uh, add a fill again and we just wanna choose an image. And the image is gonna be that same exact uh, SVG element, which you can export from Figma, that document itself, which I've already done. And so I have one called log, as in logo. <laughs> That's actually the wrong one. Let me, let me get the right one. So this one is log two, there we go. Okay, so here's our framer and we wanna change this to fit. Okay, so now we've essentially fixed that issue. So now that we have our fill and it's an image, we can create an image variable. So I'm gonna call this I logo. All right, so now that we've done that, uh, the only other thing we need to be able to adjust is the content here. So this is gonna be a plain text. So we'll just call this description. And I think that's pretty good so far. And, oh, no, it's not. We wanna be able to also take our, our tag and our tag also has a color that we need to add a, a variable for. So we'll call this tag BG and then also the content itself. Um, and so if we click on Framer, click Content, Plain Text, and this should be the last one. So this is just gonna call Tag uh, Text or something like that. Okay, so um, if I bring that back up, you'll see these are all the, the properties that we basically need, the variables. So now we can go back and what we could do before I replicate this to make the second card, um, let's do the, the actual part where we're skewing it or the 3D transform. So in order to do that, uh, there's a section called transforms right here when we select the card itself. And if we click plus, you can see we have a bunch of options here. So we can skew it, rotate it, depth, perspective, origin, back face, all this stuff. Some of these things work in, in tandem with each other. So you'll have multiple properties uh, working together. So we wanna rotate this and we wanna change this to 3D and we're gonna adjust the Y value. So if I use my keyboard up arrow key, you can see how it's kind of tilting, but that doesn't look very good. So you use this in tandem with the perspective element. There we go. So notice when we change this, 
it's really changing you know the degree to which it's being rotated and the perspective so just find something that you think works well based on tinkering with these properties you don't want it to to be too extreme by default just a, a, a slight little angle is what i'm looking for and that's good right there i'm happy with that um so in order to also do this thing like where you hover and it kind of just shifts up, we need to make this element a position absolute element. Um, and that will allow that transformation to occur a lot easier. So right now it's not position absolute, it's a relative as you can see. But I wanna give this a parent frame first before I change it into a position absolute element. So I'm just gonna give this a frame, hit F, and just wrap it around everything. So now the card is inside of the frame. We'll just call this container. We don't need a background. And now I'm gonna grab the card itself and we're gonna change it. Oh, it's already position absolute for us. Okay, so that's great. Um, now, if we come down and we click on effects and we do a hover, then here's, it's showing us what the hover variation is gonna, going to look like essentially. Um, so this is the end state of when you're hovering. So what I want to do is just lift it up a little bit. Okay. And then, and, and by the way, when I do that and I click out, let's see here. I thought it was going to persist that. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it is. Oh, the offset. We could do it here. So um, the offset Y value, there we go. So now we can push this up. I was trying to do it manually and that was not working. So I'm doing negative 51 here on the offset. So now if we click out of here and we click play and we hover over it, notice how it's coming up just slightly. And notice also how it's just automatically removing that skew. Um, if you wanted it to, to maintain that skew, of course, we click on effect and then you add it over here under 3D. So you could take this um, into a different value, like this way, if you wanted to. So notice how it just kind of transforms and flips the other way, which I think is really cool, but I don't really like it. I think it's a little bit too much. So you don't want to go too crazy with these things. So I'm just going to put zero and just make it as easy as possible to read on hover just for a fun little effect. So now uh, we could take this element, duplicate it, and because these are position absolute, they're sitting on top of each other. So we could take this element right here. We can take both of them now and get them centered up and then take this element and we'll do the opposite effect um, over here. So we could put like negative 28 so that they're kind of facing towards each other. Now, if we hit play, all right. Now they're also growing. So I don't like that because the growth factor was set to 1.1. We're just gonna leave that at one and leave this one at one as well. All right, so hit play. Very cool. So now it's just really a matter of taking these, uh, this element and making some adjustments. So the card background, maybe we want, we want this one to be uh, more of like this type of tone, like a purplish. Um, we'll grab this, get this darker. Let's actually grab this color right here and then just drag it down. Ah, there we go. I like the way that looks. Um, and then there's also the tag background. So if I just copy this color code and get the tag BG, paste that in, we can't see it now, but I'm just going to make it a little bit darker and we'll call this one like github.com and then we'll change our logo by choosing image. And I think it was L O G log. Yep. Look at that. So now look at github.com and our framer.com and just look how fun and cool this is. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. I know I did. I am actively working on the From Figma to Framer course. I've been working on it for a few months now, and we're going to be having a pre-launch, uh, I think, next week. So you're going to be able to start taking it while I'm building it, and it should be finished by May, essentially. So look out for that. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.